the uh, Gemara that we learned yesterday was about, we, we learned about the Bercha Sachama, the Bracha that said once every 28 years. The reason why it takes 28 years to say that Bracha is because we need the beginning of the season. We need the beginning of spring to, um, to fall on a Wednesday, on a Tuesday night. And Tuesday night at 6 p.m. So every year that um, the season begins um, a little off from the first year. So, for example, if the day, if if the first year it's on a Wednesday, then the next year it's it ends up being it start the season begins on a Thursday, um, maybe six hours later. So then the next year. You know, it ends up being on next day, but also six hours later. So it's uh, ultimately in five in four years, it finally comes to the same time. It comes to six p.m. Uh, but the problem is, four years later, it's not on the right day. So you <laughs> might have the right time, but it's not the right day. So then, if you right. if you wait seven cycles, it'll ultimately be on the on the right day. And, uh, and that's how you have it at the right day, at the right time. It has to start at 6 p.m. It has to be the season starts exactly the way it started when the day, when the creation of, when Hashem created the sun, the sun and put the sun in orbit. So it's, uh, it has to be on a Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Now we do the, so we all, so it's always the, the blessing of Bircha Sachama is always on a Wednesday morning. And it's always on a certain day in April. I think it's a, uh, it's April eighth. I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, it, it always has to fall on. It always ends up falling on that day because that's the cycle returns to a Tuesday night, and we do it, of course, the next morning. Now, I mentioned yesterday it has to be done early in the morning. It's not. It, it, it doesn't have to be exactly early. It's officially supposed to be within the first three hours of the day, and. Um, Last year, uh, last time this happened, it fell out on Erev Pesach. So, of course, everyone had to be up extra early to do this extra, extra thing when Erev Pesach is quite a busy day. So, uh, ended up, I think a lot of shuls probably did it quite early. But the official rule is it's it was supposed to be um, uh, before the first three hours of the day. But the Yavid, you have until Chatzos, until midday to do it. And really, it should have been at night, the night before at 6 p.m. when the original, um, when the when the actual season begins exactly the way it did at the beginning of creation, except for the fact that it's that uh, at that time it would be dark for many people, and therefore it's the rabbis established the bracha to be recited the next morning. So that's how that's the uh, the uh, the uh, history of this. Bercha Sachama, which is based on this Gemara over here, on Nun Tes Amid Beis, on 59b, uh, where it talks about the person who sees the Chama bit Kufasa, person sees the sun in its in the season, the way exactly it was when Hashem started the seasons. Yes, um, hey Ben. I wanted to, to add that I remember there was telling us that Hashem hung the sun right over Jerusalem. That's that's where the the, the sun showed up first. Mm -hmm. That originally the the creation was right. It was created right over Jerusalem. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So the so season every twenty eight years, it's right over Jerusalem. Right over Jerusalem. Uh huh. Uh huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Rabbi, I had a question. Yeah, uh, this is a twenty-eight year cycle. You're saying? Yeah, I mean it returns so, exactly the same day in twenty-eight years. It comes to so, the same place every year, but it's not the right. same time and the same day. So how does that fit in with the nineteen-year cycle? The the moon cycle is the nine is the nineteen-year cycle, or uh, the, the, you know, this is the season cycle. This is the uh, the seasons. So yeah, there's not there's this. night there's nineteen every nineteen years, all the days of the week and all oh, the you dates. Mean, yeah, right, right. That that works out. Uh, what you're saying, I'm sorry. The the um the nineteen year cycle it 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 allows the 
the sun and the, the, and the and the moon to return to their and in other words to start a new cycle that, that they that they uh, you know they sort of like start start fresh but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right day of the week so in the, in the uh, yeah, just, cycle it ends up being the right day of the week i was just wondering if there was some type of uh, interconnection between the two i i don't believe so believe they're separate they're separate thing sorry sorry i can't get this off okay so uh so then the gemara mentioned that um uh the uh when when exactly is this uh time for the bracha it has to be the bias says it's every 28 years and uh, it has to fall at a certain um, certain mazel, certain when when uh, the shabtai is when the 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 the, the, the season um, falls starts kufas nisan falls on shabtai and Saturn, but orta de tlas nagi arba when it's Tuesday night going on to Wednesday, so it ends up being every twenty eight years when you have that exact everything is exactly set up. To uh, in the sky the way it was originally when Hashem created the world. So we um, recite a special bracha commemorating that. There is a question that uh, is asked: Don't we say this bracha? Don't we say such a bracha every day? Yoitzer Hamairis, Hashem creates the luminaries, so we don't wait for the twenty-eight years. It seems like we're saying a bracha, thanking God for creating the luminaries. Uh, Seems like we say it every day. So why? What is this? Uh, what is different about this bracha over here? And the uh, the answer is that creating the bracha, creating the luminaries that we say every day, that is a bracha more of thanks to Hashem, and this is more of a bracha of praise to Hashem. The bracha of thanks to Hashem is the benefit we have from the luminaries. The praise to Hashem is how Hashem created the entire creation. And I say, my say, voracious. Now, the, uh, the Gemara then mentioned that a person sees the Yam HaGadol, uh, he says a certain bracha, Baruch Sha'asas Yam HaGadol, and uh, the Gemara said that uh, that's only recited when you see it every so often, not if you see it often. If you see it often, then you wouldn't uh, recite the bracha. It's only if you see it um, on uh, with a with a separation of thirty days. And I mentioned to you there's a discussion what exactly thirty days, but the uh, uh, the Mishabura seems to hold that it, uh, you have to have a full thirty days uh, sep of not seeing it. That means it doesn't include the day that you saw it last, and it doesn't include the day that you're seeing it now. It's 30 days of non-seeing the, the yam. So it seems like there's a machlekes about it, but that's how the Mishnah Berurah, uh, Paskins, that's how he, that's what he says, that we should follow that strict uh, uh, view that you have to wait a full, that it has to be a full 30 days that you haven't seen it. And then the Gemara says that um, a different uh, situations, a person sees uh, the Euphrates River, uh, from, uh, it depends where he sees it. You have to see it in a place where it's in the same, um, uh, it, it's flowing the same way it was from creation. If the uh, if they moved the river to flow a different direction, then you cannot recite the bracha there where Hashem did the work of creation because that's not the work of creation. That's actually the man-made. If, if people have redirected it somewhere else, then it would not be actual, the actual creation, the way it was created, it would be uh, some, someone, someone's involved, human involvement in it. And uh, the Gemara mentioned a similar thing about, uh, about the Tigris, uh, 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 that if you see it in a certain place, you could say it, um, you could say this bracha, but uh, otherwise you, uh, um, um, you know, possibly it, it it was changed. So from there and up upstream, you could say it, but afterward, but uh, downstream is a problem because you know people uh, 
the government might have changed it or the uh, town, you know, the the, uh, the uh, water department changed it. Some, uh, you know, some department in the, uh, in the government might have changed it. Some individual might have changed it. So basically, uh, we, we want to recite this bracha uh, if it's in its same the same way it was when it was created. And uh, then the Gemara talks about the tigress, that it's uh, called chidekel. And why is it called chidekel? Because the, the water is sharp. And um, uh, which most of the comment, most of the, the translators translated that it has something to do with the taste. That it, sharp means that it's some good, ta- good, good taste, I don't know. And kal means that it's, uh, it's light, which, which the uh, at least we saw in Rashi that it's um, that it's uh, in weight it's light it's good to drink because it doesn't make the body feel heavy which uh, I'm not sure if other water does make a body make make a person feel heavy but somehow this is even lighter than uh, than other water and uh, it's good to uh, and it's good, good to drink. It's not machbid al haguf. It's that's the way Rashi says it. It doesn't make the body in machbid in as haguf. Now, the, then, what's interesting is the Gemara then says that uh, that frost is uh, the 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 um, the Euphrates River is uh, uh, called frost because it's name of parim beravin. Its water multiplies, and it's considered. Um, it's considered a very uh, uh, healthy uh, water. So they, both of these rivers. And uh, then Rava said that the, the B'nai Mechuza uh, are considered uh, s- smart and sharp because they drink the water of the Tigris. So possibly if based on this, this statement, what it means uh, when it says it's sharp is that it causes you to be sharp. It causes your brain it uh, benefits the brain. It gives your brain some sharpness. I wonder if that would be. Uh, I wonder if anyone ever did any research on people who lived near the Tigris, if they have any uh, uh, high IQ, because that would that would seem to be uh, an interesting thing, based on this Gemara that the Bnei Mechuzah were sharp people because they would drink that water, and um, and um, uh, uh, maybe it could be a. a, a medicine for uh, Alzheimer's or something. I don't know. But uh, just uh, the, then the Gemara mentions that they also they would, they, they, the people there used to be very, they had a red complexion and the Gemara says because they used to uh, have uh, relations during the day and um, it would have an effect <laughs> on the child, the children. And this that their eyes move around is because they, uh, they, they seem to dwell in Dark houses that don't that uh, don't have a lot of light, either the windows or I don't know, they don't have uh, candle light, whatever it is, they don't have light, and therefore their eyes tend to jump around and look around a lot. And uh, we had our whole discussion here of uh, uh, if it has to do with the fact that they uh, when they see light, their eyes are. Or they're constantly looking for things because they, they don't want to fall. Uh, so they're 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 constantly uh, uh, you know make, looking around. Um, but in any event, uh, that's the Bene Mechuza, the people of Mechuza. Then the Gemara mentioned, and we started this Gemara, but we didn't finish it. We mentioned this Gemara about for rain. What's the bracha on rain? So on Yishamim, on rain, a person says a bracha toy v'hametiv. And um, the Gemara seems to find the contradiction because there's another place where it says that the bracha on rain is uh, a bracha that um, you say moidem anach nulach, you say like a whole thanks. And we said it's connected to nishmas kol chai and the Shabbos davening and yant of davening. We have an extra paragraph after the uh, Oz Yashir, there was a paragraph called Nishmas, and that paragraph is a very beautiful praises of Hashem, thanking Hashem, saying how uh, we, we, we could never thank you enough. And it has, uh, uh, so that paragraph is, uh, um, even if our mouth would be 
Malay Shira Kayam would have a uh, uh, song the size of the sea, we would not be able to thank you enough, Hashem. And uh, so that uh, is what, that's the bracha a person says for the for the rain. Now, uh, and then you end off, um, and that's the bracha, the actual bracha is at the end of that paragraph, Baruch Atah Hashem, and the, uh, the question is, um, uh, the, the Gemara asks, Hashem is just the majority of praises, of, 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 of thanks. So the Gemara answers, uh, uh, no, it's, uh, you should say, and Rav Papa says, no, if you say them together, it's not a problem, because doesn't mean the majority, it means abundance. Because Rav could have two meanings. Rav could mean majority, it could also mean harbe, like abundance. And, um, and Keloi does, he's the God of all praises, of all things. So therefore, the um, the uh, uh, the Gemara says that maybe that you should say both of these. Anyway, the bottom the bottom line that the Gemara is bringing from this whole thing is that there's a contradiction. What's the contradiction? Our Mishnah said that the bracha is a toiva native, and here we bring a, a statement that uh, either was said by Rabavo or is a brisa that the bracha that said is this bracha keloi dois roivoi dois uh right it's, it seems to be a different bracha than hatoiv amitiv again what does hatoiv amitiv mean he hatoiv hashem is good and he does good to others toiv amitiv he is good and he does good that's that toiv amitiv this uh, this other bracha is all about uh hashem is the god of all thanks so it's a different wording. Of course, they're both very nice blessings and they're both thanking Hashem. Hashem is good, he does good, or he's the God of, th- of, of, of thanks and so on. But the fact is it's different wording, different brachas. And, uh, and there's also a quite lengthier, the, the Nishmas prayer, depending on how, what, to what extent the Gemara means that he says Nishmas, but it's definitely longer uh, prayer than a bracha toiva metiv, which is a, you know, one-liner. And uh, so that's the question here. Yes, uh, uh, Mordechai, I think you were first. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, in, uh, in my gain on post, where we say in the Amida uh, uh, on Friday, after the Amida on Friday night, uh, there uh, it says, Kale Ha-Ho uh Uh-huh, uh-huh, right. And Yishtabach. Yeah. Uh, yes, David. Yeah, I was looking at one of the footnotes um, where I was talking about Chama Betaka Fusa. Chama Fasa. Yeah. So the so the footnote is saying that according to the approximate calculations of the solar year, based on Shmuel's reckoning of the seasons. So a year is 365, 365 days and six hours long. So based on this, each of the four seasons lasts 91 days plus seven and a half hours. hours right. So um, I'm interested in gematria. So 91 is the gematria Amen. of, uh, well, not it's not only Omain, but it's also... The two names Yud of Hashem, and, uh, Yud, yeah, yeah, Yud Kevavke and Adnai, which uh-huh. is supposed to be uh, the two main names of Hashem, mm-hmm. and this ninety-one is the days of the seasons equal to the two names of Hashem added together. So I thought yeah, that was I, I thought yeah. that was significant. Yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice. You have to figure out how to add the seven and a half hours on top of that. But yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's interesting that the seasons are that way. Seven and ninety-one days from one season to the next. Okay, let's. Uh, so, so in any event, um, so we're uh, so we have this contradiction. We have this contradiction. Gemara is going to try to answer it a number number of different ways, and um, so we're going to uh, let's look back into the Gemara.
the, the uh, we're going to start where 59b. The Ella Kasha. That's where we're going to start. The Ella Kasha. Ella Kasha is about uh, 23 lines up from the bottom of the page. 59b, the Ella Kasha. So this seems to be a Kasha. There seems to be a contradiction between if you say Hateva Meita for the rain, or if you say Moidem Anach Mulach, you thank Hashem. And we say we 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 thank you, Hashem, and Baruch Kel Keloi Dois or Rovai Dois Keloi Dois. You say this bracha of the that Hashem is the God of thanks. So again, it's a contradiction to our Mishnah. So it's very apropos over here, especially because we're talking about brachas, these special brachas, and uh, our Mishnah mentioned this about the Geshamim, and and remember what the Mishnah said. The Mishnah said for rain. And for good news, you say hatoi vahametiv. Let me just give you an example. Hatoi vahametiv, if a person gets a big inheritance, they say hatoi vahametiv. Hashem da. So it's like, it's a bracha for good, or if you have a very good wine, which we'll soon see about both of these things, that you get, you say this bracha hatoi vahametiv. So on rain, you also say hatoi vahametiv. So it's on rain and on good news, you say hatoi vahametiv. Now, um, um, the Gemara here says, so, so, uh, we have this contradiction. The Gemara answers, like Kasha. It's not a question, it's not a contradiction. Ha, Deshama Mishma. This is where you hear that it rained. Um, and you're, you, you weren't there, you didn't see it. You, you woke up the next morning and they told you it rained the night before, but you didn't actually see the rain. And um, you can say the bracha hatoiva hametiv then, because you heard that it rained and Hashem was good, but you can't really say um, uh, you, you can't really say the maidim because you didn't actually see it. The, and, and, and however, ha the chaza mechzer. But here, where you actually saw it, you could say this whole maidim anachulach. You say this. Thank you. For Hashem, we thank you uh, for all the drops, every single drop that you rained upon, that you rained down. And um, and then you could say that other longer bracha, that longer bracha for um, for the um, for re, uh, for the rain. Okay, so that's for seeing it. So we Rabbi, have hearing it and seeing it. Yes. I was going to ask a question regarding uh, uh, lightning. When a person, uh, when you when you're saying the bracha on lightning, is it that you actually saw the lightning bolt, or is it enough that if you see, let's say it's outside and it's dark, but you're inside, but you see the entire outside light up for that split, for that second or two, it lights up the sky. So if you're seeing that through the window or through the blinds without seeing the actual lightning bolt. Can you still say the bracha on lightning? Yeah, it's a good question. I, I often uh, thought about it, and I wanted to look it up once. Uh, I, I often wait till I see the actual bolt, but uh, I'm not sure if you have to. You probably can say it without that. Um, I will have to look it up. I'll, I'll take a look, Matt Hashem. Now that you reminded me, it'll make, make me uh, look it up. Uh, if you're really supposed to see the actual, uh, the actual zigzag, you know. Um, there was also some. There was also some the discussion of which bracha you say first if you're seeing the lightning and the thunder, and it had to do with uh, the speed of light and the speed of sound. The speed of light goes slower than the speed of sound, or, or vice versa. So you're saying one in front of the other, even though the, the other is happening. The speed of light happening. is the fastest. Yeah. So the speed of light is the fastest, but the person doesn't hear the sound until a uh, delay, even though it's happening at the same time. So they're saying that the speed of light being the fastest, that's not the order that it happens. It's the, it's the speed of, it's the sound bracha, uh, which is uh, that bracha should be said first because the speed of sound is happening at the same time, but it's coming, uh, 
it's taking a longer time for it to reach you. And therefore, uh, Ose Masa Voracious is the bracha that you would say second. You follow what I'm saying? I, I think it's the opposite. Oisem, I think oh. you say Ose Masa Voracious first. And um, because you see the, 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 the light first, and then you hear the thunder. The thunder. Yeah, even though it's happening at the same time. Yeah, I, but yeah, right. So, um, it had to do with the uh, speed of light and the speed of sound, one occurring before the other. So, um, in Shama I, just wanted, I just wanted to add that even if you're outside, you don't necessarily see the, the zigzag or the, or the lightning. Depends which way you're facing, which way you're facing. If it's behind you, you won't see it either. So it doesn't matter. Of course, it depends. You're right. You don't always see it. Now, uh, the uh, the Alter Rebbe, at the end of the Seder Berchas Hanen, and he brings, if you hear Ra'am and you see Barak, so Ra'am is the thunder and you see the lightning, Ke'echad, if you see them all together, which is very rare, because that would mean that they're both very, that it's happening right near you. And that's when the, the closer it is to each other. So if you saw them both, if you saw the, 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 the lightning and the thunder, you heard right at the same time, you recite one bracha for both. Aval which is the norm, you see one and then the other one. Mavarech al you say a bracha on one and then you recite a bracha on the other one. And the, 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 the minhag of the world, the minhag, the, custom, the common custom in these countries is to recite on the lightning, uh, and on the thunder, the because the majority of times they come one after the other immediately, and you don't want to recite the same bracha two times one after the other. It's better to praise Hashem with the majority of praises um, instead of just giving the same praise. And so they chose for the uh, for the um, uh, thunder that his strength fills the world because the thunder shows the strength of Hashem more than the lightning. And um, um, so basically, uh, you know, the Alter Rebbe doesn't talk about, um, you know, the, uh, the, the order, except that he does imply like that would be, you know, you see the thunder and, you know, you, you you would you would say on he does mention this one first. You see the lightning, you say Oisemaisabracious, and on the he mentions it first, then he mentions on the thunder, you say We learned already that it doesn't matter. You could say either bracha is interchangeable, right? And uh, as the Alter Rebbe says here, that it became a custom, you say for lightning, you say the Oisemaisabracious, and for thunder, you say but officially you could really say the same bracha. For both each each bra the, the both of those brachas are interchangeable. So I think usually a person has the lightning uh, first, and then comes the thunder. But right. I was taught that the thunder bracha comes first and then the lightning and it had to oh, do really? with the speed of the, the speed of light and the speed of sound so when i saw so, so when they you sort have of, to recite first yeah so that's what do you do taught. then you lose out in the lightning bracha no you're still saying the lightning bracha it's just that the speed of of, of light is faster than the speed of sound so that actually um i, I have, forget the details yeah but yeah it's, but you would have to say the bracha for it immediately after you only have a few seconds to say that bracha so right after say, the lightning. So, so if, if you wait for the thunder, no, yeah, not, not I'm not saying not waiting like one and there's, there's like a second or two later you heard the thunder. So a person might think that the lightning was first, but actually the thunder was first. Therefore, you say and then say oh say mas veracious. Yeah, and I would it, have a. It, yeah, it, it, I, it appears that the thunder is first, but it's only because the speed of sound is slower. Uh huh. Uh huh. But I would I would question that because the uh, 
the, uh, I don't, the I don't well, think when you Rabbi, I, can we move on? I mean, to me, this is this yeah. really has no bearing at all. The fact well, of the it, matter is, you're saying you should be saying thank you, Hashem, for doing these things. Period. Okay. The order has nothing to do with anything. No, it, it it there is discussion about the order, and I'm not disagreeing that it is. I've seen, I've heard people mention about the order. It does deserve to be looked into, but um, the the point is, it is it is connected to our Gemara. I mean, it's not connected to this specific Gemara. It's connected to the Gemara that we learned a few days ago. But um, but the point is that uh, uh, I hear what you're saying, David. But you keep in mind that there is an important halacha, and that is that it's supposed to be from when you see it. That means that you only have a very limited amount of time to say that bracha. And if you miss it, then you have to wait till the next lightning or thunder. So that's why I would question. But Rabbi, lightning will always occur (laughs) first too, because electric jumps through the air. And and thunder is when the clouds hit each other. So the lightning would come before the clouds hit each other. But it, it goes by when you see it not when it actually happened. You see it always first, and it happens always first. So when you see it, that's when you say the bracha. But you have teich kadei dibra. You only have a short amount of time. In fact, there's a discussion in Shulchan Aruch. If you're in a dirty place, what do you do? Because by the time you leave, you might not be able to say this bracha anymore. Because you're in a place where you can't recite a bracha. And if you have to run, run, run out of that place, You'll be in a uh, you'll you'll end up uh, losing your time frame of being able to recite the bracha, and it mentions it right there in the Shulchan Aruch. Um, and uh, you know, if you if you can leave and say, and say it within Teich de Dibur, in other words, you could run uh, away. Then um, and the the thunder is still making sound, and uh, and um, uh, then you could say the bracha. If not, you're not yotze. Um, You can't recite the bracha on the past, at least according to some opinions, some arguments. But um, if you if you have no choice and it's already the the, the the storm is is ending and there's no more lightning or thunder, then you could say the bracha without Hashem's name. It says because there is such an opinion, you could say it on the past. But that's not the uh, the the. Uh, if you want to say the bracha, you need to say it right away. Okay, so that uh, I think that touches upon this issue. David. Again, you could look, you look look it up further and see what the you know what the uh, commentaries say. And I, I have heard such a thing about you have to see one, uh, but you know before the other. But I don't know what the source. I don't know what the source of that is. Okay, uh, the uh, so in any event, we're talking about we have this contradiction here. I want to answer that there's a difference between what you hear and what you see, and. Um, uh, one of them you would say this bracha, one you would say the other bracha. Now, the Gemara says, uh, really? For hearing is when you hear about the rain, you say, Hatoiv v'hametev, and you need the, the Mishnah needs to tell us that when you hear it, when you hear about the rain, that it rained, uh, you, you say, Hatoiv v'hametev. That's part of the Surah's Taivas. That's part of the good news. That you would say The Mishnah doesn't have to have to detail the case of rain because it's part of the other case of hearing good news. So if the Mishnah is saying that you would say the bracha for rain, it must be not that you heard about the rain; it must be that you saw the rain, and therefore it has two things: when you hear good news, you say and when you see the rain, it's Otherwise, it wouldn't have to separate it into two categories. It's all included in hearing good news, right? Again, the Mishnah, our Mishnah said two categories. It said hearing good news, one category. Another category was rain. Now, if it means you heard about the rain, then it's part of hearing good news. It must be seeing rain. Seeing rain and hearing good news, that would be two categories. So our answer that we just said doesn't seem to flow well, because we tried to say it's so about hearing about the rain, and hearing about the rain should be included in hearing good news that it would obligate you for a bracha of hatayva So the Gemara says, Deshama, Deshama Mishma, Deshama Mishma, that you heard about the rain, Hainu Basuras Taivas. That's the same as, as uh, hearing good news. 
uh, Utnan, and we learned in the Mishnah, Al Basuris Taivais, Oimer Baracha Taiva Metiv, for good news, you say Hataiva Metiv. And, um, and the Gemara answers that, uh, and, and so the Gemara has to answer, of course, that our Mishnah must be talking about that you did see the rain, and still you say Hataiva Metiv. So we need another way to differentiate between seeing the rain that our Mishnah talks about and seeing the rain that the Brysa or Rebavahu talks about, because he said a different bracha than our Mishnah said. So the Gemara answers, Ela idi idi de chazi it must be that both are talking about that you saw the actual rain. The loikash, and it's not a contradiction, the fact that our Mishnah says one bracha, and the Brysa or Rebavahu says a different bracha, had also korta, here where it rained a little, and the uh, ha the asa tuva in here where it rained a lot. And Rashi says, "What's asa porta? When you, it rains a little, you say this moidem anachnu bracha. You say thank you. We are praising Hashem. When it rains a lot, you say hatoiv vehametiv. You say this bracha of toiv and toiv hametiv. Now." Um, then the Gemara says, um, uh, and if you want, um, you could answer it by saying another difference. Both cases are talking about that it rained a lot. But like Hashem, it's not a contradiction. Here it's talking about where a person has land. He owns property, he owns land. And ha the less layara, and here is when he doesn't own land. So when he when he owns land, he says hatoiv vehametiv, and when he doesn't own land, he just says the maidem anachnulach the thanks for all the thanks that Hashem does. So he doesn't have he doesn't have ground, but toiv vehametiv is like he's benefiting from it. So that's why he has to own land because he's then it would be that he's benefiting from it. So he would say the hatoiv vehametiv who does good, who is good and does good, implying to himself. Now, islay ara, he has land hatoiv vehametiv. Islay ara hatoiv vehametiv, hatoiv vehametiv mevarach. Does he recite uh, the bracha hatoiv vehametiv if he has land? Vehatanya, didn't we learn in a brisa? Bona bayis chadash v'kanach kelam chadashim. If a person bought a new house or he bought new utensils, Oimer he says baruch shachianu v'giyanu l'zman He says the brach of shachianu. Hashem, let me live to this time. Now shall um. Now, if a person has land, just like he bought, buys a new house, um, he says the bracha shachianu. So he should say a bracha shachianu on the rain that he's benefiting from. Uh, there are a few other words here in the Gemara that the uh, that the Hagoy uh, Sagra um, uh, removes. He take the takes out. So so the Gemara says that it's loikasha, not a contradiction. So in other words, the Gemara is asking contradiction that why are you saying a bracha uh, when this uh, uh, when it rains. But when you own land and it rains, you say, you should say, Shachian. My answer is like, like, Hasha is not a question. Here is when you are a partner and you're benefiting, and other people are also benefiting because you have a partner. And, um, not just necessarily a partner in your property. But there are other people that are benefiting. Had the less lay shutfus in here is when there is no partner. In other words, it's only a benefit to you. And that's when you say the Shachiyano Bracha, which is the famous, the common understanding that the difference between Shachiyano and Taivan Metiv is Shachiyano is when you benefit from something. And Taivan Metiv is when more than one person benefits. And, um, as Rashi says, Kulay Shaloy when all of the benefit is yours, or the whole house is yours, you say Shachiyanu. And um, and then the, the, the Gemara brings a proof to this, and it says, 
Vatanya, and this is what we learned in a Brisa. Kitzrei Shol Davar, this is the summary of the matter. This is the uh, the general rule. Al Shalai, for something that you benefit from, Ho Aimer, Baruch Shachiyonu Mikimanu, you say the Shachiyonu Bracha. Shalai, Al Shal Chaveirei, when it's you and others, then you say the Bracha, Baruch Aimer, Baruch Hatoiv, Behametiv, you say the Bracha Hatoiv, Behametiv. You say this bracha who does who is good and does good because it's more than just one bracha. Shachiyano is like that Hashem let me live. Um, um, or that well, Shachiyano is, is plural, but but uh, uh, it applies to um, interesting that that Shachiyano is really a plural bracha, but it applies when it's a benefit to you. Because you are saying it for yourself. So I know. I know. It's just interesting that it's plural. I'm just thinking about it. Uh, um, in other words, I understand the Shachiano, you know, for Yantiv, you say Shachiano, mm-hmm. right? He let us, uh, but Shachiano, if it's supposed to be an individual bracha, it is interesting that it's in a plural. Yes, but term. you realize that Shachia, you're not the only please. one, that you are not the only one. No, you bought, you bought a new house. That, that he kept bought, alive. You know. Yeah, no, but you bought a new house. It's it's a it's it's a praise. You know, you're the one who's thanking Hashem, yeah. right? It's, it is interesting. You take, are you thanking clothes. Hashem? You include everybody for for thanking for, Hashem for making everybody live or whatever. So you're thanking Hashem for making them live, but you're the one who has the new house. Yeah, one Jewish bracha is a simcha for all Jews. Well, if it's a simcha for all Jews in truth, then they should say hateva ametiv. Because hateva ametiv is... Or they can say shechem. They can say amen to your shechem if they hear it. Right. It's just interesting that it's 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 said in plural. Yeah. I'm just I'm just mention I'm just mentioning this. It just came to my mind now that it's, that if you look at the dictu, it's, it's shechem, different. Yeah. Shechem, I guess the wording was established. For maybe for young, I don't know why, why why it is that. We have to think about it. Okay, so in any yeah. event, um, the Gemara you light says the that, candle for everybody, and you say it too. You don't say it over my team. In which case, Hanukkah candle. When you light a Hanukkah candle with people in the house, you don't say it over my team. You say right, it right. Yano. Right. So what you're saying is the bracha was established for holidays. And once we the rabbis made the the, the uh, text of the bracha, we use it for other occasions as well. But the text was already made for cases where it's where everyone is having their their joy, where mm. everyone is having that where where we're all thanking Hashem for this for the holiday. Anyway, in any event, the point, the bottom line that the Gemara is saying is that there's two brachas. One is when it's a when it's a uh, unique, um, um, special event for you. Where you say Shachianu. You bought something. You bought a new car. You bought a new house. You bought a new uh, airplane, a boat. Um, I don't know. Boat. Maybe you have to. It's, it's a. Well, I guess the day you buy it, supposedly you're happy. But uh, uh, <laughs> they they say it's a it's a huge expense. A boat. He always uh, regret it afterwards. But, um, but, Rabbi, uh, so you, what you also said, what is that? So, when you sell the boat, you also say, Shechiano? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's, so, uh, um, it's like uh, they asked the, the person who was dancing on Simplus Torah, you don't learn Torah the whole year. Why are you dancing? So, he said, if my brother has a Simcha wedding, should I not dance? Ah. So it's a simcha for all Jews. Right, right, right. Very nice. Good point. So um, so the Gemara says that uh, uh, for all these things, you save the Shech Yanu Bracha because it's your individual joy. But for uh, something that other people are benefiting from, like for rain, then you would say Hatoi Vameti. So again, what we're, what we're seeing here is the rain bracha is for, because other people are benefiting from it, it would be Hatoi Vameti. Now, what, 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 what comes out is we have a few answers. We have the answer of 
uh, if it rains a little or it rains a lot, then you would have two separate brachas, either a bracha for Hateva Metiv or the bracha of um, uh, Hateva Metiv is if it rains a lot, and according to Rashi's chat, and and, uh, and if it rains a little, you would say the Moide uh, Manach Bulach. And then uh, we had another answer that it, both cases it rains a lot, and the difference between the brachas is if you own land or don't own land. If you own land, then you would say the bracha um, of Hateva uh, Metiv, and if you don't own land, you would say the bracha, you would say the Maidem Anachnulach with Baruch Kel Haidois. Okay. So uh, the Gemara, and, and the Gemara brought a proof that uh, if there's, uh, if, if it's only your benefit, you say Shachianu. If it's, uh, if other people are benefiting, you could say the uh, the Hateva Metiv, and that's a proof that it should, shouldn't be Shachianu, it should be Hateva Metiv. Then the Gemara says, say Anu, it's also plural. Shachianu. No, Anu, Anu. Oh, Maidem Anachnu Lach. Yeah, it's also plural, so the same like, like the other. Mm. Uh-huh. Right, interesting. So, um, I mean, the truth is, it's not, uh, it's not surprising. Maidem Anachnu Lach is not limited to an individual. Shechianu is. So Maidem and Achlach is not surprising. Shechianu is a little surprising because it's supposed to be limited to an individual simcha. Oh, okay. So that, that's the thing. It's a little surprising. Okay. V'chol heicha, the Gemara says, V'chol heicha deles alachrina b'hadei loy mevarech atoi v'amitiv. Any place that others are not participating and benefiting in the in the, in the, in the uh, celebration and the uh, in the, in the goodness that's happening in the in the uh, uh, they're not beneficiaries. Uh, the, the, so in, in such a case, you don't say the bracha. You only say it when other people are also beneficiaries of this goodness. Tanya, didn't we learn in a brisa? Amrulay, they told him Yolda Ishtai Zachar. If your wife gave birth to a to a to a boy, you say the bracha So. Um, it would seem that you're having a special uh, uh, event, current milestone in your in your in, in your life, and it's a ben. It's a the blessing is for you, um, uh, and so therefore you see that you say hatayvametiv even if it's only one one person is benefiting, not others. So the Gemara answers that hasam nami deika ishtei bahade over there also because your wife is also with you. In other words, both of you are benefiting from having a boy, and therefore the necha la bezacher. She also wants to have a boy. It's not just that the husband wants the boys and the wife wants the girls. She she also wants a boy, and therefore it's a two people are benefiting, and uh, they you can recite the hatayva meitav bracha instead of the shachiyano bracha. The question right. is, what happens if you have a girl? That's the question that I had, <laughs> because they they made they made it very they made it very specific. They said when she gave birth to a boy, right. So the thing is, for a girl, you say shachiyanu, but you don't say hatoy v'hametiv, and um, it has something to do with the fact that a. Um, the the uh, the the boy, a, a a male child is going to uh, support you when he gets older, possibly. But uh, uh, a female um, leaves the house. Leaves the house, mm -hmm. and and it's it's up to her husband if uh, if, you get, if he's going to support the uh, the in laws. I, and, I, I, I thought it was because he continues the name of the family. Uh huh. I don't she know where I. She takes uh -huh. she, she she takes her husband's name. Uh huh. Uh huh. Interesting. Let me just uh, pull it up here. Uh... I mean, that's that's my thought. I didn't. There's nothing that that backs it up. Right. Right. Second, where is this? Okay, 
Um, So it is brought in the uh, Seder Berchas Hanen, and over here in the in the back of the uh, of the Alter Rebbe Shofan Aruch, he does mention about um, about the bracha of Shachianu for a girl. You see. Um, Yolda Ishtay Zacher. If a if a wife gives birth to a male child, you have to say Ateva Mativ. It's because Hashem is good to him and he's mative to his wife, because she is also happy to have a male child. And on any male child that's born, and she's also obligated to recite this bracha, even if the man is in a different city and they told him that his wife gave birth, he should say Ateva Mativ. If his wife passed away in childbirth, he should not say Ateva Meitiv, he should say Shachianu, because um, he's the only one who's benefited. Now, when he sees the child um, uh, that's born, if he sees the child within 30 days from the day that he heard that his wife gave birth, he doesn't have to recite another bracha Shachianu, because he already said the bracha um, Ateva Meitiv. But if after 30 days, um, he has to say the bracha um, um, if he's excited when he sees the child. Even if he saw the child before 30 days, if he's excited, and even on a daughter, you have to recite all every 30 days when you're excited to see her, like it says that on a good news, um, uh, like, it, like, it, like it was explained in Halacha Yud Aleph, that um, when you see someone you're excited over, you haven't seen them in 30 days, you say Shachianu. Um, and even if you heard from them, oh, interesting, the, the Alter Rebbe holds that even if you uh, had a, got a letter from them, or you heard from them, Baal Peh, because the main bracha is on the joy, the joy of seeing their face. And even women say this bracha when they see their friends, when they're excited to see them. And also a man for his mother, for his daughter, for his sister. Uh-huh. I think there's an argument about this or a question about this among other, in other uh, Sfarim, but the Alter Rebbe says you would say the bracha even if you got a letter from them. Okay, anyway, the point is, but the Alter Rebbe doesn't explain for a girl why the bracha, I thought maybe he would explain uh, why for a girl you only say shehachiyanu, and you do not say the bracha hatoiv Um But he just says you would say the uh, the shehachiyanu bracha, but he doesn't explain it. Um, the so I did see it somewhere where it mentioned the the explanation that I gave, but that's interesting. The, Ezra wanted to say that the the male keeps the family name and um all right we'll have to think about it that's an interesting propagates, explanation propagates the name propagates the name okay uh it is important right and 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 the tribe the tribe the tribal family yeah. you know he's keeping the, the tribe uh, uh connected okay um let's see where we're up to over here Tashima. Okay, so the Gemara says, "Come in, come in here, and um, come and listen uh, to the following proof. Do you really need to have two people in order to say Hatoiva Hamitiv? Mace of Ivahu Yarshif. A person's father passed away, and he inherited uh, a nice size inheritance. So, uh, so it says, 'Betchilo Aimer Baruch Dayanoyemus.' He has to say two brachas. 
First, he says, Dayon Ha'emes. He says the Hashem is the true judge. And then, um, and then he says that uh, um, he says because of the inheritance, he says now, what does that mean? That even though uh, he's the one who's benefiting, who else is benefiting from this inheritance? He's benefiting from the inheritance. Uh, so why is he saying if he's it's only one person? So the Gemara answers, Hasam Nami, they're also Dika Achi the Koyarsi Bahade, is because there's brothers that are also inheriting. Because if there's no brothers that are inheriting, maybe you wouldn't say the Hatoiv Vehametiv because he's only one person. So the Gemara answered this proof. First, the Gemara wanted to prove you see even one person, you say Hatoiv Vehametiv. The Gemara said, no, it's not a proof because maybe they're brothers. That's why you can say the Hatoiv Vehametiv, there's more people that are benefiting from this inheritance. That you would be that person would say the hatoiv v'hametiv. The Gemara asks, brings one more proof. Tashma shino yayin, come and listen. If the, they changed the wine, meaning they brought you a new bottle of wine to your to the table, ain sarech levare. You don't need to say a barpi agafet. Shino yimakom. What happens if you changed rooms? Sarech levarech. You got to say a new bracha. Barpi agafet. Rabbi Yosef Bar Abba, Amar Rabbi Um, that what? Even though they say you don't have to repeat a bracha, uh, for the chain new. New wine, aval oimer baruch hatoiv hametiv. But you do say hatoiv hametiv when you have another wine that comes to the table. You say this bracha hatoiv hametiv. So you see that you don't need other people. You're sitting there in your table. They brought you a nice new bottle of wine, and now you're going to have this new, this nice uh, aged wine. And you say bracha hatoiv hametiv. You don't have to say baruch yagafen because you said the bracha on the wine already. But you do have to recite a new bracha. A special bracha, hatoiv hametiv, that Hashem is good. He's giving me this special wine. Hashem bra, bra, arranged a special wine. I'm going to say a special bracha. So my answer is it's not a proof. You're one person. You're saying hatoiv hametiv. No, the Gemara says that's not a proof. Hasam nami. There are also diga bnei chaver to the There's other people that are drinking with you, and therefore it is more than one person who's benefiting. And because you have more than one person benefiting, you can say hatoiv ametiv. That's the halacha that you can't say hatoiv. I know some people try to say the bracha hatoiv ametiv uh, when they bring new special wine, like an expensive wine. So if you like make kiddush on your man of shevet's wine or something, and then they bring a nice bottle of wine, you could actually say this bracha hatoiv ametiv only if you're drinking with someone else and you're both benefiting. You both drank the bad wine first, and you're both drinking this <laughs> nice wine afterwards. You could say this bracha hatoiv ametiv. Yes, uh, Ezra. No, I always thought that, you know, if someone brings you a, a, a good white wine, you say, ah. but, Yeah, that's very interesting. White but, wine. Yeah, I'm but sorry. Red, but red wines, even if they're new, nobody, I've never heard that. I shouldn't say never. I was never told that you would say a Tovamativ on it. Right. So what's, what's interesting is that, um, that really, uh, red wine is the same as white wine in a sense that if it's a better wine, you could say hatoiva hametiv. But the problem is that we aren't people who know wines, uh, what's better, what's worse. We know what we pay for the wine and we know what they want to charge us for the wine, but we don't really know the taste. Like, I don't know if we understand wines so well. However, there's a rule that white wine is always considered healthier than the red wine. Interestingly enough, I know where Fran the French claim that the red wines are, of course, much more healthy for the uh, heart uh, and so on. But uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a uh, um, a statement in the uh, at least in uh, I know the Alter Rebbe brings it that the white wine, even if it's worse wine, even if it tastes worse, but it still has a benefit over the uh, over the um, of the red wine, and therefore it's bari laguf yoiser. It says, so if you have drink red wine with a friend, 
And then you bring, then you have the white wine. So you could say the bracha teva mitiv, even if it's worse than it in taste, because as long as it's not very much worse than it, that it's not fit to drink only by uh, uh, forcing it by, uh, uh, you know, al yadei hadchak, by like, uh, you're really uh, forcing yourself to drink it. If it's not really that bad, then you could say the bracha hatoiv v'hametiv because the white wine is considered healthy for the body more than the red wine. And so that would be why you're saying that on a white wine, you say it because we're a little nervous to drink it. You know, if you have one Cabernet and they bring out another Merlot, uh, you know, uh, is it how much more? So this one costed $10, $20 more. Is it really much better? We, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not a big wine. I don't know wines, but but uh, but if you have white wine that they brought out white wine, then you have no problem. You could for sure say the bracha because uh, uh, it's healthier for the body according to halacha. It's considered hatoiv v'hametiv. Hashem did something good for you, and you could say you could say the uh, the hatoiv v'hametiv. So that that would be the reason, Ezra, why white wine. Uh, uh, you've seen, you've heard you've seen people say the bracha on and not red wine. Okay, everyone, have a wonderful day. We'll see you this Thank afternoon. You,